Act Five of Aura, a Tragedy in Five Acts by Joanna Bailey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One. The Great Hall of the Castle. Enter Rudiger, Katharina, and attendants by different doors. Rudiger to attendant. Returned again. Is anything discovered? Or door or passage, garment dropped in haste, or footsteps track, or any mark of flight? No, by my faith, though from its heights turrets to its deep vaults, the castle we have searched. Tis vain to trace the marks of trackless feet. If that in truth it has conveyed her hands, the yawning earth has yielded them a passage, or else, through rifted roofs, the buoyant air. Fools, search again. I'll raise the very walls from their foundations, but I will discover if door or pass there be to us unknown calling off the stage ho oh, gomez there he keeps himself aloof nor aids the search with true and hearty will i am betrayed ho oh, gomez there i say he shrinks away go drag the villain hither and let the torture wring confession from him a loud knocking heard at the gate ha who seeks entrance at this early hour in such a desert place? Some hind, perhaps, who brings intelligence. Heaven grant it be. Enter an armed vassal. Ha! One from Aldenburg. What brings thee hither? Vassal, seizing Rudiger. Thou art my prisoner. To attendance. Upon your peril, assist me to secure him. Audacious hind! By what authority speak'st thou such bold commands? Produce thy warrant. Tis at the gate, and such as thou must yield to. Count Hugobert himself with armed men, a goodly band his pleasure to enforce. Secures him. What sudden freak is this? Am I suspected of aught but true and honourable faith? Thy by our holy saints more than suspected thy creature maurice whom thou thoughtest to bribe with things of seeming value hath discovered the cunning fraud on which his tender conscience good soul did all the sudden so upbraid him that to his lord forthwith he made confession of all the plots against the lady aura in which thy wicked arts had tempted him to take a wicked part all is discovered katharina aside all is discovered where then shall i hide me aloud to vassal what is discovered ha most virtuous lady art thou alarmed fear not the world well knows how good thou art and to the countess shortly who with her lord is near thou wilt no doubt give good account of all that thou hast done katharina aside as she retires in agitation oh heaven forbid what hole of the earth will hide me exit enter by the opposite side hugobert eleonora alice glottenball erston maurice and attendants hugobert speaking as he enters is he secured he is my lord behold pointing to rudiger hugobert to rudiger black artful traitor of a sacred trust blindly reposed in thee the base betrayer for wicked ends full well upon the ground mayst thou decline those darkly frowning eyes and gnaw thy lip in shame and rests no shame with him whose easy faith entrusts a man unproved or oh, having proved him 
let some poor hireling's unsupported testimony shake the firm confidence of many years here the accuser stands confront him boldly and spare him not bringing forth maurice maurice to rudiger deny it if thou canst thou brazen front all brazen as it is denies it not rudiger to maurice fool that of prying curiosity and avarice art compound it i in truth did give to thee a counterfeited treasure to bribe thee to a counterfeited trust meet recompense <laughs> maintain thy tale for i deny it not oh subtle traitor dost thou so varnish it with seeming mirth sir rudiger thou dost i must confess outface him well but call the lady aura if towards her thou hast thyself comported in honesty she will declare it freely to attendant bring aura hither would that we could last night in the midnight watch she disappeared whether man or devil hath borne her hence we cannot tell oh both both man and devil together joined to rudiger furiously fiend villain murderer produce her instantly dead or alive produce thy hapless charge restrain your rage my lord i would right gladly obey you were it possible the place and the mysterious means of her retreat are both to me unknown thou liest thou liest glottenball coming forward thou liest beast villain traitor think'st thou still to fool us thus thou shalt be forced to speak to hugobert why lose we time in words when other means will quickly work straight to those pillars bind him and let each sturdy varlet of your train inflict correction on him i this alone will move him thou sayest well by heaven it shall be done and will count hugobert degrade in me the blood of aldenberg to shame himself that plea avails thee not thy spurious birth gives us full warrant as thy conduct varies to reckon thee or noble or debased to attendant straight bind the traitor to the place of shame as they are struggling to bind rudiger he gets one of his hands free and pulling out a dagger from under his clothes stabs himself now take your will of me and drag my course through mire and dust your shameless fury now can do me no disgrace erston advancing rash daring thoughtless wretch dost thou so close a wicked life in hardy desperation priest spare thy words i add not to my sins that of presumption in pretending now to offer up to heaven the false repentance of some short moments for a life of crimes my son thou dost mistake me let thy heart confession make. yes dog confession make of what thou'st done with horror else i'll spurn thee and cast thy hateful carcass to the kites hugobert pulling back glottenball as he is going to spurn rudiger with his foot who has now fallen upon the ground nay nay forbear such outrage is unmanly eleonora who with alice had retired from the shocking sight of rudiger now comes forward to him oh rudiger thou art a dying man and we will speak to thee without upbraiding confess i do entreat thee ere thou goest to thy most awful change and leave us not in this our horrible uncertainty is aura here concealed thou hast not slain her confession make and heaven have mercy on thee yes ladies with these words of gentle meekness my heart is changed and that you may perceive how greatly changed let glottenbaum approach me 
Spend him I now, and can but faintly speak. Even unto him in token of forgiveness, I'll tell what ye desire. Thank heaven thou art so changed. Hugobert to Glottenball. Go to him, boy. Glottenball goes to Rudiger, and, stooping over him to hear what he has to say, Rudiger, taking a small dagger from his bosom, strikes Glottenball on the neck. Oh, he has wounded me! Detested traitor! Take that! And that! Wouldst thou had still a life for every thrust! Killing him. Ha! Ah. He has wounded thee, my son? A scratch. Tis nothing more. He aimed it at my throat, but had not the strength to thrust. Thank God he had not. A trumpet sounds without. Hark! Martial notice of some high approach. To attendants. Go to the gate. Exeunt attendants. Who may it be? This castle is remote from every route which army leaders take. Enter a servant. The banneret of Basil is at the gate. Is he in force? Yes. Through the trees his distant bands are seen some hundred strong, I guess. Though with himself, two followers only come. Enter Hartman, attended. Forgive me, Banneret, if I receive thee with more surprise than courtesy. How is it? Comest thou in peace? To you, my lord, I frankly will declare the purpose of my coming. Having heard it, it is for you to say if I am come, as much as I wish, in peace. To Eleonora. Countess. Your presence much emboldens me to think it so shall be. Proceed, I beg. When burghers gently courtesy affect, it chafes me more than all their sturdy boasting. Then with a burghers plainness, Hugo Bird, I'll try my tale to tell. Nice task, I fear, so that it may not gall a baron's pride. Brave Theobald, the lord of Falkenstein, co-burger also of our ancient city, whose cause, of course, is ours, declares himself the suitor of thy ward, the Lady Aura, and learning that within these walls she is, by thine authority, endurance kept, in his behalf I come to set her free, as an oppressed dame such service claiming from every generous knight. What is thy answer? Say, am I come in peace? Wilt thou release her? Ah, would I could! In faith thou gallst me shrewdly. I've been informed of all that now disturbs you by one who held me waiting at the gate. Until the maid be found, if tis your pleasure, cease enmity. Then let it cease. A traitor has deceived me, and there he lies. Pointing to the body of Rudiger. Hartman, looking at the body, a ghastly smile of fell malignity on his distorted face death has arrested. Turning again to Hugobert. And has he died and no confession made? All means that may discover Aura's fate shut from us? Ah, the fiend hath uttered nothing that could betray his secret. If she lives... Alas, alas, think you he murdered her? Merciful heaven, forfend! Enter a soldier in haste. Oh, I have heard a voice, a dismal voice. What, what hast thou heard? heard? What voice? The Lady Aura's. Where? Lead us to the place. Where didst thou hear it, soldier? In a deep tangled thicket of the wood, close to a ruined wall, overgrown with ivy. That marks the ancient outworks of the castle. Haste, lead the way. Exeunt all eagerly, without order, following the soldier, Glottonball, and one attendant accepted. You do not go, my lord? I'm sick, and strangely dizzy grows my head, 
and pains shoot from my wound it is a scratch but from a devil's fang there's mischief in it give me thine arm and lead me to a couch i am very faint this way my lord there is a chamber near exeunt glottenball supported by the attendant scene two the forest near the castle in front of a rocky bank crowned with a ruined wall overgrown with ivy and the mouth of a cavern shaded with bushes enter franco conducting hugobert hartman eleonora alice and erston the soldier following them franco de hugobert this is the entry to our secret haunts and now my lord having informed you truly of the device well meant but most unhappy by which the lady aura from her prison by falkenstein was taken myself my outlaws unhappy men who better days have seen drove to this lawless life by hard necessity are on your mercy cast which shall not fail you valiant franco much am i indebted to thee hadst thou not of thine own free good will become our guide as wandering here thou found'st us we had ne'er the spot discovered for this honest soldier a stranger to the forest sought in vain to thread the tangled path eleonora to franco she is not well thou sayest and from her swoon imperfectly recovered when i left her she so appeared but enter not i pray till i give notice holla you within come forth and fear no ill a shriek heard from the cave ah! what dismal shriek is that tis aura's voice no no it cannot be it is some wretch in maniac's fetters bound the horrid thought that bursts into my mind forbid it righteous heaven running into the cave he is prevented by theobald who rushes out upon him hold hold no entry here but o'er my corpse when ye have mastered me my theobald dost thou not know thy friends ah thou my hartman art thou come to me yes i am come what means that look of anguish she is not dead oh no it is not death what means thou is she well her body is and not her mind o oh, direst wreck of all that noble mind but tis some passing seizure some powerful movement of a transient nature it is not madness theobald shrinking from him and bursting into tears tis heaven's infliction let us call it so give it no other name covering his face eleonora to theobald nay do not thus despair when she beholds us she'll know her friends and by our kindly soothing be gradually restored let me go to her nay forbear i pray thee i will myself with thee my worthy hartman go in and lead her forth theobald and hartman go into the cavern while those without wait in deep silence which is only broken once or twice by a scream from the cavern the sound of theobald's voice speaking soothingly till they return leading forth aura with her hair and dress disordered and the appearance of wild distraction in her gait and countenance aura shrinking back as she comes from under the shade of the trees etc and dragging theobald and hartman back with her come back come back the fierce and fiery light shrink not dear love it is the light of day have cocks crowed yet yes twice i've heard already their matin sound 
Look up to the blue sky. Is it not daylight there? And these green boughs are fresh and fragrant round thee. Every sense tells thee it is the cheerful early day. Ay, so it is. They takes his daily turn, rising between the gulfy dells of night like whitened billows on a gloomy sea. Till glow-worms gleam and stars peep through the dark, and will o' the wisp his dancing taper light, they will not come again. Bending her ear to the ground. Hark, hark, ay, hark, they are all there. I hear their hollow sound full many a fathom down. Be still, poor troubled soul, they'll ne'er return. They are for ever gone. Be well assured thou shalt from henceforth have a cheerful home, with crackling faggots on thy midnight fire, blazing like day round thee, and thy friends, thy living, loving friends, still by thy side, to speak to thee and cheer thee. See, my aura, they are beside thee now. Dost thou not know them? Pointing to Eleonora and Alice. Aura, gazing at them with her hand held up to shade her eyes. No, no, athwart the wavering garish light, things move and seem to be, and yet are nothing. Eleonora, going near her, My gentle Aura, hast thou then forgot me? Dost thou not know my voice? Mm, it is like an old tune to my ear return. For there be those who sit in cheerful halls, and breathe sweet air, and speak with pleasant sounds. And once I lived with such, some years gone by, I watch not now how long. Keen words that rend my heart. Thou hadst a home, and one whose faith was pledged for thy protection. Be more composed, my lord. Some faint remembrance returns upon her with the well-known sound of voices once familiar to her ear. Let Alice sing to her some favourite tune that may lost thoughts recall. Alice sings an old tune. And Aura, who listens eagerly and gazes on her while she sings, afterwards bursts into a wild laugh. <laughs> Witched air sings for thee bravely. Ah, hood owls throw mantling fog for matin birds. It lures not me. I know thee well enough. Bones of murdered men thy measure beat, and fleshless heads nod to thee. Off I say, why are ye here? That is the blessed sun. Ah, uh, Aura, do not look upon us thus. These are the voices of thy loving friends that speak to thee. This is a friendly hand that presses thine so kindly. Putting her hand upon Aura's, who gives a loud shriek and shrinks from her with horror. O oh, grievous state! Going up to her. What terror seizes thee? Take it away! Ah, oh, it was the swath it did! I know its clammy, chill, and bony touch. Fixing her eyes fiercely on Eleonora. Come not again! I am strong and terrible now. Mine eyes have looked upon all dreadful things. And when the earth yawns and the hell blast sounds, I'll bide the trooping of unearthly steps with stiff clenched terrible strength holding her clenched hands over her head with an air of grandeur and defiance hugobert beating his breast a murderer is a guiltless wretch to me be patient tis a momentary pitch let me encounter it goes up to aura and fixes his eyes upon her, which she, after a moment, shrinks from and seeks to avoid, yet still, as if involuntarily, looks at him again. <sighs> Take off from me thy strangely fastened eye. I may not look upon thee, 
Yet I must. Still turning from him, and still snatching a hasty look at him, as before. And fix thy baleful glance, art thou a snake? Something of horrid power within thee dwells. Still, still that powerful eye doth suck me in, like a dark eddy to its wheeling core. Spare me, oh, spare me, being of strange power, and at thy feet my subject head I'll lay. Kneeling to Hartman, and bending her head submissively. Alas, the piteous sight, to see her thus, the noble, generous, playful, stately aura. Theobald, running to Hartman, and pushing him away with indignation. Out on thy hateful and ungenerous guile! Thinkest thou I'll suffer over her wretched state the slightest shadow of a base control? Raising Gora from the ground. No! Rise, thou stately flower, with rude blasts rent, as honoured art thou with thy broken stem, and leave it strewn as in thy summer's pride. I've seen thee worshipped like a regal dame with every studied form of marked devotion, whilst I, in distant silence, scarcely proffered even a plain soldier's courtesy. But now, no liegeman to its crowned mistress sworn, bound and devoted is as I to thee. And he who offers to thy altered state the slightest seeming of diminished reverence must, in my blood, to Hartman. Oh, pardon me, my friend, thou'st wrung my heart. Nay, do thou pardon me. I am to blame. Thy nobler heart shall not again be wrung. But what can now be done? Or such wild ravings there must be some control. Oh, none, 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 but gentle sympathy and watchfulness of love. My noble aura, wander where'er thou wilt. Thy vagrant steps shall followed be by one who shall not weary, nor e'er detach him from his hopeless task, bound to thee now as fairest, gentlest beauty could ne'er have bound him. See how she gazes on him with a look, subsiding gradually to softer sadness, half saying that she knows him. There is a kindness in her changing eye. Yes, Aura. "'Tis the valiant Theobald, thy knight and champion whom thou gazest on. "'The brave are like the brave, so should it be. "'He was a goodly man, a noble knight. "'To Theobald. "'What is thy name, young soldier? "'Woe is me, for prayers of great Salcedo are dying men, "'yet they have laid thy clay in unblessed earth. Shame, shame not with the stilled and holy dead, this shall be rectified. I'll find it out, and masses shall be said for thy repose. Thou shalt not troop with these. Tis not the dead, tis Teobald himself, alive and well, who standeth by thy side. Aura, looking wildly round. Where? where all dreadful things are near me round me beneath my feet and in the loaded air let him be gone the place is horrible baneful to flesh and blood the dreadful blast their hounds now yell below in the thinter gulf they may not rise again till solemn bells have given the stroke that severs night from morn oh rave not thus dost thou not know us aura ay well enough i know ye ha think ye that she does it is a terrible smile of recognition if such it be nay do not thus your restless eyeballs move but look upon us steadily sweet aura away your faces waver to and fro, I'll know you better in your winding sheets when the moon shines upon ye. Give o'er, my friends, you see it is in vain. 
her mind within itself holds a dark world of dismal fantasies and horrid forms. Contend with her no more. Enter an attendant in an abrupt, disturbed manner. Attendant to Eleonora, aside. Lady, I bring you most dismal news. Too grievous for my lord so suddenly and unprepared to hear eleonora aside what is it speak attendant aside to eleonora his son is dead all swelled and racked with pain and on the dagger's point which the slight traitor is stealing his stiffens grasp retains foul stains like those of lime poison show full well the weak cause of his untimely death hubert overhearing them who speaks of death what didst thou whisper there how is my son what look is that thou wearest he is not dead thou dost not speak o oh god i have no son after a pause i am bereft but this but only him heaven's vengeance deals the stroke heaven often mercy smites even when the blows the verest is i had no other hope fell is the stroke if mercy in it be could this could this alone atone my crime submit thy soul to heaven's all-wise decree perhaps his life had blasted more thy hopes than even his grievous end he was not all a father's heart could wish but oh he was my son my only son my child the thing that from his cradle grew and was before me still oh 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 beating his breast and groaning deeply Aura running up to him ha dost thou groan old man art thou in trouble out on it though they lay him in the mould he's near thee still i'll tell thee how it is a hideous burst hath been the damned and holy the living and the dead together are in horrid neighbourship tis but thin vapour floating around thee makes the wavering bound Pow! blow it off and see the uncurtained reach see from all points they come earth casts them up in grave clothes swathed are those but new in death and there be some half bone half cased in threads of that which flesh hath been and there be some with wicked ribs through which the darkness scowls back back they close upon us oh the void of hollow unbold sockets staring grimly and lipless jaws that move and clatter round in mockery of speech back back i say back back catching hold of hugobert and theobald and dragging them back with her in all the wild strength of frantic horror whilst the curtain drops the end of aura end of act five end of aura a tragedy in five acts by joanna bailey